Qin was overthrown. China was split again. The second emperor and the revolting peasants both died. The new players now were the warlords. Some nobles of the former six warring states re-established their former states. The two strongest warlords at that time were the king of Han, Liu Bang, and the king of Chu, Xiang Yu. The other warlords had to join the two different groups, either Chu or Han. That was the wars between Chu and Han, Chu Han Zhanzhen. Liu Bang was born in an ordinary family of Chu state in Warring States period. He had a high nose, broad forehead, and a long beard. One rich man once saw Liu Bang, he said, that's the look of the dragon. He then married his daughter to Liu Bang and gave him lots of money. Liu Bang had 72 moles on his neck, which represented 72 stars on the sky. Liu Bang always showed his neck to other people and told them that he was the son of a dragon. Liu Bang's father also admitted that his wife was once raped by a dragon. Obviously, Liu Bang was born by his mother and another unknown man and he never cared about what other people were talking about him. Before Qing Empire was founded, Liu Bang was a wandering swordsman. He went to Wei State to find a warrior job for Lord Xinling, Xinling Jun. But Qing Shi Huang had united China. No one was allowed to hire warriors or swordsmen. Liu Bang then passed the examination and became a local sheriff of his hometown. Once, he needed to send some civilians to Nishan Mountain for building Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum. Lots of people died for building Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum. On their way to Nishan Mountain, more and more people ran away. According to the law of Qin, Liu Bang and the leftover people would be sentenced to death. They had to take the joint liability. Liu Bang then set these people free. He could not go back to be the sheriff anymore, so he went to hide in the mountains. Some people were moved by Liu Bang and they had nowhere to go either, so they followed Liu Bang. No sooner after that, the peasants' uprising led by Chen Sheng and Wu Guan broke out. People had suffered too much for the cruel cool law of Qin. Uprisings broke out everywhere in China. Angry people killed the local officials sent by Qing government and announced their independence. In Liu Bang's county, Pei County, the county magistrate worried that he might be killed by the local people, so he decided to revolt against the Qing government first before the revolting people killed him. His subordinate, whose name was Xiao He, then suggested him to call back Liu Bang for cooperation because Liu Bang was the local sheriff and he had lots of bandits friends. In terms of rebellion, Liu Bang was the best person. The county magistrate then sent his messengers to inform Liu Bang that he wanted to cooperate with him. When Liu Bang arrived at the county gate from the mountains, he found that he was cheated by the county magistrate. The county magistrate changed his mind. He wanted to kill Liu Bang. Liu Bang then shot an arrow into the town. People picked up the arrow and read the letter attached on it. Liu Bang announced on the letter, Open the gate and kill the county magistrate. Otherwise, I will kill all of you in the town. The local people knew that Liu Bang was a senior hooligan. They believed that Liu Bang would kill them all once his men broke in. So they rushed to the county magistrate's place and killed him. They opened the gate and let Liu Bang in, and they gave Liu Bang a super cool title, the Duke of Pei County. Liu Bang then organized his army and announced his uprising. At first, Liu Bang's army was too small, so he joined in Xiang Yu and his uncle's army, and he became the subordinate of Xiang Yu's uncle. Xiang Yu and his uncle treated Liu Bang quite well because they all came from Chu State and also because Liu Bang was good at making friends. Unlike Liu Bang, Xiang Yu was born in the general family of Chu Warring State. When Xiang Yu was small, he lost his noble status because Chu State was exterminated by Qin Shi Huang. 
Xiang Yu's uncle Xiang Niang took him to escape to Jiangdong region, which was in southeast China. Xiang Niang tried his best to educate Xiang Yu, but Xiang Yu was not a good student. He refused to go to school to learn literature. He told his uncle that he had already know how to write his name. That was enough for him. His uncle then found a swordsmaster to teach him the swordsmanship. Xiang Yu refused again. He said that he could simply kill the swordsmaster with his fist. He would never use the fancy swordsmanship skills on the battlefield. His uncle then got angry. What on earth do you want to learn? Xiang Yu said. A top swordsman could only kill ten men at the same time. I want to learn the techniques of killing ten thousand men at the same time. His uncle was so glad that Xiang Yu said such words, because they were came from a famous general family of Chu State. He then taught Xiang Yu the art of war and some other military books. Xiang Yu abandoned learning the military books a few days later. He told his uncle that the military theory was useless in the battlefield. Xiang Yu's uncle then gave up educating him. Xiang Yu grew up into a high and strong man. He could lift a huge bronze tripod with one hand. After Chen Sheng and Wu Guang's uprising broke out, the provincial governor invited Xiang Niang to cooperate with him for the uprising issues. That was because Xiang Niang's father, General Xiang Yan, was regarded as the hero of a true state, so the governor wanted to use the Xiang family's influence. Xiang Yu was not happy that the governor wanted to use his grandfather's name. He rushed into the governor's office while the governor was talking with his uncle. He quickly cut off the governor's head. Then he showed the head to the guards outside and announced his rebellion against the Qing Empire. There were more than 100 guards outside. They were shocked by Xiang Yu's crazy behavior. They waved their swords and circled Xiang Yu. What happened next was incredible. Xiang Yu killed 100 men with his sword before his helpers arrived. Since then, Xiang Yu's rebellion force grew up quickly. This is not a story. This is recorded in Shi Ji by the great historian Sima Qian. Xiang Yu was recorded as a top warrior in Chinese history. That's why Xiang Yu had so many fans in China. Without Xiang Yu, Qing would not be overthrown. Back to the second year of the Second Emperor's reign, the anti-Qing armies of the Six States were heavily defeated by Qing general Zhang Han. Han State and Wei State were annexed again by Qing. Qing army fiercely attacked the Zhao State. The king of Zhao was besieged in a place called Julu. Zhao was in danger. Once Zhao was exterminated, Qing would win again. But the anti-Qing Anians dared not to help Zhao because the Qing Imperial Army there was the strongest army of the empire, the Great War Legion. They were defending the Great War when the peasants' uprising broke out, but they were back and proved that the Qing Empire was still strong and powerful. So the warlords just watched near the battlefield. Just then, the 24 years old Xiang Yu arrived in Julu. He led 50,000 Chu state soldiers to fight with 500,000 Qing troops without fear. The other lords watched the total war knife string from the other side of the battlefield. To everyone's surprise, Xiang Yu defeated the Great War Legion. After watching this show, the lords all kneeled down to Xiang Yu's camp to show their respect and fear. The 24 years old Xiang Yu then became the big brother of all lords. He gave himself a super cool name, the hegemonic lord of West Chu, Xi Chu Ba Wang. While Xiang Yu was fighting fiercely with the main force of Qing army, Liu Bang's army easily broke into the capital city of the Qing Empire, Xianyang. Because there was no force left in Xianyang city, the monarch of the Qing Empire, Ziyin, surrendered to Liu Bang. Liu Bang listened to his strategist's advice. 
he did not kill Zi Ying, but treated him nicely. He forbade his army to loot the people lived in Xianyang City, and he announced that the former cruel law of Qin Empire was invalid. Only three laws were kept. Those who killed other people should be sentenced to death. Those who hurt other people or robbed other people should be punished according to the injury or loss. Liu Bang had won the hearts of the people of Xianyang City. They became the greatest supporters of Liu Bang in the coming wars between Liu Bang and Xiang Yu. Xiang Yu's strategist Fan Zhen was shocked to know that Liu Bang had not looted Xianyang people and the royal palaces. He told Xiang Yu, "All of us knew Liu Bang was a hooligan. He loved money. He loved women. Ever since he entered Xianyang, he did not want money and women any more. Why? Because what he wanted is a whole empire now. We need to kill him." Xiang Yu totally agreed with Fan Zhen. He was angry about Liu Bang for quite a long time because Liu Bang had taken his opportunity to exterminate the Qin Dynasty, while Xiang Yu was fighting fiercely with the Qin Main Force. Therefore, Liu Bang became the greatest hero of overthrown Qin Empire, not him. So he decided to exterminate Liu Bang and his army as soon as he arrived in Xianyang. Liu Bang could by no means defeat Xiang Yu, so he decided to go to Xiang Yu's camp and apologize to him. Xiang Yu was glad Liu Bang would come to his camp to offer his head. Fan Zhen and him then made a black dinner for Liu Bang, because Xiang Yu's camp was in a place called Swan Gu's Gate. This feast was later recorded in history as the Swan Gu's Gate feast. Liu Bang was twenty-four years older than Xiang Yu. He had many years of social experiences. His greatest talent was telling dirty jokes and making friends. At the banquet, Liu Bang tried his best to compliment Xiang Yu. Xiang Yu was quite young. He did not want to kill Liu Bang any more. Xiang Yu's strategist Fan Zhen then held the Jade Goblet high. Seeing this signal, Xiang Yu's brother. Xiang Zhuang then started to play the sword dance. He pretended to kill Liu Bang by accident. Don't forget, Liu Bang was an experienced sheriff with lots of bandits' friends. He soon found some excuse and escaped. Xiang Yu then lost the best opportunity to kill Liu Bang. After Xiang Yu entered into Xianyang, he looted this rich capital for several days. His hatred towards Qin Empire was much deeper than Liu Bang. His grandfather Xiang Yan and his uncle Xiang Liang all died in fighting against the Qin army, and he lost his noble status because of Qin Empire. One Confucianism scholar came to Xiang Yu and said, "Xianyang is a prosperous city, and it is the capital of Qin Empire. Why don't you stay here and make it as your own?" Xiang Yu replied. If I stay here, how can my old friends and neighbors in my hometown witness my success? Being successful but not returning to hometown is like wearing luxury dress in the dark night. The scholar shook his head and said, "The people of True State behave like ridiculous monkeys." Xiang Yu was True State people. He immediately buried this man alive in the pot. He said to the poor man, "How do you feel about the true state monkey now?" At last, Xiang Yu set a fire to burn down the grand royal palaces of Qin Empire. The fire lasted for many years. Everything was burned into ashes, but Xiang Yu had left, never returned.